welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands and we lift our hearts as we offer up this praise unto your name. Welcome into this place. Welcome to So you desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands and we lift our hearts and we offer up your praises to your name. Welcome to this place. Welcome to this place. So you desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands and we lift our hearts. So we
Good morning, Daddy. Good morning. Good morning, Daddy. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for letting us come into this house again one more time to worship you, to glorify you. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to be here. Thank you for the safe passage back into the sanctuary of our pastor and his first family you, and our first family. Thank you, God. Thank you that you gave them traveling mercies so that we can see them again, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you for giving us life. Thank you. Thank you, you are in control of everything. Yes, you are in control of everything. And like the psalmist said, welcome into our broken vessels. Yes, Lord. Welcome into our broken vessels. Open us up, Lord. Open us up, Lord, so that we can glorify you, Lord, so that we can shout all day, Lord, so we can sing praises to your name all day, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for all the ministries that you allowed us to have in this upcoming 75 years. Thank you, God. Thank you for all of us to assemble here and still want to be here at Carter for these 75 years, Lord. Thank you, Thank you God. Thank you, God. Thank you. Allow us to, to continuously to work together, to continuously to be humble towards one another, yes, to Lord. continuously to love one another, Thank to you. spread the gospel in the community, Thank in you. the community and outside of the community. Thank you, God. I bless all the people that live in this building, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I don't bless them, but you bless Thank them, you Lord. Jesus. Thank bless you, Father. Bless. Thank you, Father. I know, Father, that you have a word for this holy man that you have sent us here to call the community. Lord, he is holy, Lord. He preaches your word, Lord. It is what you, you ordain him to say each and every time he's in this pulpit, Lord. Thank you for the word that you're going to give him, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you. These things I ask and pray in Jesus' name and give thanks for in Jesus' name. Let's give the Father a hallelujah and a hand clap. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen. Holy. Holy. Holy is holy. 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 Holy is holy. I need his favor, favor, God's favor. Thank you.
somebody ought to praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Let me tell you something about him. He's a healer. 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 Thank you, Lord. Y'all may not know who I'm talking about, but Jesus. Jesus, 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 he's holy, he's holy. let it go love Jesus my soul love Jesus my soul love Jesus bless his name my soul love Jesus my soul love Jesus my soul love Jesus bless his name he's here holy Holy, holy, he's holy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 To God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be the glory for the great things God has done, the great things God is doing, and the great things God is about to do. Our God is worthy to be praised. Good morning, family. So good to see you, beloved, to be in this worship space with you here in the sanctuary. And good morning to those who are watching and joining us virtually today. I am the Reverend Dr. Kevin D. Miller with the wonderful gift and blessing of serving as the pastor of the Carter Community AME Church located physically in Jamaica, New York, but right now can be seen all around the world. And we give God praise for all that God continues to do in our midst. Beloved, I rise to share just a few announcements into our hearing. And before I do that, Michaela, stand up. I know we can barely see you. You got to grow a little bit more, but stand up. I just want everybody to know I'm peacock proud of her. Yesterday, she was a part of the church school convention, and she spoke very well. She's like, I'm a member of Carter Community AME Church. So she represented all of us extremely well. So, Michaela, well done, baby girl. Well done. Amen. Beloved, today we will celebrate uh, Christ with the Holy Communion. So for those persons who are at home, uh, we invite you to have your communion elements ready as we celebrate communion later on in this worship experience. We give God praise always for our young people, kingdom keepers, for Christ. Our amazing young people every Sunday, virtually at 1 o'clock, uh, they come together and they worship and they learn and they teach. Amen. 
Uh, so our young people are growing into phenomenal, phenomenal leaders. Uh, so we invite you, if you're listening, if you have young people, we invite you to invite them and encourage them to be a part of Kingdom Keepers for Christ. We've had people be a part of this worship experience all up and down the eastern seaboard. Uh, so we've had people certainly here in New York and Queens and the Bronx, down to uh, Washington, D.C., also in South Carolina, Mississippi, and Georgia. They've just come, and they've been a part of this worship experience. So we thank God for our young people and for what God is doing in their lives. We encourage you, and in fact, we invite you every Wednesday to be a part of our worship experience where we come together for Bible study every Wednesday at 7 p.m. And for those listening on the prayer line, we'll give you all of this information after worship today. Uh, but certainly Wednesday from 7 to 8, uh, we are in God's Word, studying God's Word. We also invite you certainly Thursday morning to be a part of the prayer call. Uh, we call out to God. We call out to God. And we thank God for hearing and answering all of our prayers. So every Thursday morning at 6 a.m. And then certainly you see on your screen uh, information regarding the daily scriptures. And for those in the sanctuary and, again, those listening at home, we will give you this information after service today. You want to stay in God's word daily. I got three amens. You want to stay in God's word daily. Oh, yeah, I'm not alone. Amen. To God be the glory. So, yes, yes, yes. We'll give you all of this information after worship today. Not this week, but next week, we invite you to keep uh, the Christian Education Congress in your prayers. Uh, that will be taking place down in Dover, Delaware, Delaware State University, where pastors and lay and young people and adults of all ages will be coming together uh, at Delaware State University for the first Episcopal District Christian Education Congress that goes from July the 18th to July the 21st. If you want more information, you can receive information via email and you want to search uh, or you want to email uh, FED is in first Episcopal District, FED, CED is in Christian Education, and then Congress, FED, CED, Congress at gmail.com. And if you can't go, I don't know, but I think some of the services will be able to be joined virtually. Once I get that information, I will certainly share that with you as well. But please keep everyone in prayer as we go underneath the theme of rethinking church in a changing world. Amen. We are so grateful to each and every one of you for your commitment to God and certainly to your faithfulness to the ministry. Uh, we are a tithing congregation. God continues to bless us. And because we are blessed, we can be a blessing to others. We should not take that lightly. Somebody ought to say amen. We should not take God's favor lightly. God has shown us favor, and we must continue to show God that we will be a blessing to others. Again, we are a tithing congregation, and the tithe is bringing back 10% of what God has given unto you. God makes the declaration. God shows us that God can do more with the 10% than with the 90% that we keep for ourselves. Tithing, many people think it is about a, a financial commitment. In some ways it is, but what tithing really is about is a faith commitment. It's about a faith commitment. When you put God first, God says he'll take care of all of your needs. So if you're not tithing, I invite you to pray about it. Everybody doesn't start tithing right away. I am a witness to that. I gave my life over to Christ, and it took me years before I got to a place when I started tithing. But I can tell you this. Once I started tithing, God showed up time and time and time and time again. So I just thank God, and I give God praise for who God is. There are a number of ways for which you can give to the ministry of tithes and your offerings. If you use Zelle or PayPal, search Carter Community AME at gmail.com. Again, Zelle or PayPal, search Carter Community AME at gmail.com. Or on your mobile device, search the GiveLify app and search Carter, Carter Community AME Church. Or you can mail your gift to Carter Community AME Church, located physically at 112-25. 167th Street, and that's here in Jamaica, New York. The zip code is 11433. For those who are in the sanctuary, we're not moving around as we once did, but in the back of the sanctuary, you'll see a receptacle at either side of the church, a receptacle to your right, my left, and a basket to my right, your left, uh, where you can place your offering and your tithe, and the officers will take charge of it after service today. Gracious God, we want to thank you for the gift and for the giver. But more importantly, we want to thank you for being God. Please now bless everyone underneath the sound of my voice. 
in a way that they would know that you are the one that are doing the blessing and that, God, that you would be the one that would be glorified. God, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name that the people of God say amen. As Brother Arthur Burke comes at this time to read our scripture lesson, uh, which will come out of the Gospel of Math, I'm sorry, the Gospel of Mark, Gospel of Mark chapter 5, uh, verses 25 through 34. Again, Gospel of Mark chapter 5, verses 25 to 34. I do just want to take a moment, Carter community, to say thank you uh, for your support as we had the homegoing celebration for Brother Arthur Mosley on Friday. Uh, we were here in the house, we were in the Zoom room, uh, and we give God praise for a life well lived for Jesus. Uh, so I just want to thank you always, officers, social media, Carter community, I want to thank you always, uh, because you always have a way of showing up and giving support, especially in times of sorrow. So thank you, thank you, and thank you again. Brother Burke, how are you this morning, sir? I'm doing great, brother. How are you? I'm well, you? praise God. Can you all hear him in the mic? Say good morning, Brother Burke. Try it now. Good morning, church. There we go. Amen. There we go. Let me turn this thing on. Uh, good morning, church. It's a pleasure for me to stand before you and read the words, the living words from a living God. Yeah, we find a his words in the book of Mark, chapter 5, verses 24 through 24. What did you tell me, Reverend? Seems like the devil always trying to mess with me for some reason. Mark chapter 5, verses 25 through 24, 34. And they read as follows. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many positions and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. Then when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press, become and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straight away the, fount the fountain of her blood was dried up, and, and when she felt in his body, in her body, that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that the virtue had gone out of him, turned himself about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And the disciples said unto him, thou seest the multitude through thee, throughout thee, and saith things saying, Thou who touched me? And he took the round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman feared and, and trembling, knowing what had, was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, the, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. 
blessed reading of the living word of our living God. Amen. Amen. Great is your mercy towards me. Your loving kindness towards me. Your tender mercy I see day after day. Forever faithful towards me. Providing for me everything I need towards me.
brand new is the MC. Listen now. you will once again stand with me and strengthen me yes, Lord. that your message will be preached fully through me that all would hear amen. amen beloved i'll draw your attention to the gospel as recorded by mark fifth chapter 27th and 28th verses where you'd find these words when she heard about jesus she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I can just touch his clothes, I shall be made well. For a time this morning, I want to speak to the sermon title, Room for One More. Room for One More. Jesus and his disciples had just returned from the other side of the sea. And as soon as Jesus got off of the boat, the Bible informs us that there was a multitude of people who surrounded him. A huge crowd came from all sides of him. The Bible doesn't tell us much about the crowd, but I would imagine I would imagine that there were people in the crowd that just wanted to get a glimpse of Jesus. Some people hoped, I'm sure, that they would see a miracle for themselves. Others, I'm sure, were there to try to humiliate him. Some were probably there just because they were curious about, about this person from Galilee. Some might have been there because they wanted to hear some of the teachings that Jesus was sharing with the people. Others, I'm sure, showed up to try to discredit him. When you read from verse 21 down through verse 24 in that fifth chapter, we, we discover that in the midst of this crowd, there is a ruler. There is a leader of the synagogue. His name was Jairus. Jarius was somebody. Jarius was somebody who was there to uphold the Jewish law. And what we find out, Sister Morrison, is that, is that Jarius also has a daughter who's sick. Sick unto death. So much so that Jarius gets in front of Jesus and says to Jesus, Lord, if you come with me and just lay your hands on my daughter, I know she would be made well. 
Isn't it interesting that somebody who is a defender of the religion now finds himself in a place where his circumstance is greater than his religion? And when I say religion, beloved, I'm talking about the laws. I'm talking about the rules. I'm talking about the regulations. He needs Jesus more than he needs religion. He needs Jesus more than he needs protocols. He's gotten to a point where he needs somebody that's greater than his situation to do something about his situation. Titles are not going to get somebody healed. You can call Pastor Miller all day long. The fact that I have the title of pastor or the title of reverend or, the, or whatever your title, the title of bishop, it will not get somebody healed. The religion doesn't save somebody's life. And many of us find ourselves in the same space as Jarius. Where you say, look, my daughter is more important than the religion. My daughter is more important than the denomination. My daughter is more important than, than the rules and the regulations. And the Bible says that Jesus, Brother Bruinton, agrees to go. So Jesus, Jarius, and the crowd begin to make their way to Jarius' house. The multitude, they follow along with Jesus. Verse 25, we discover something powerful in the text. Sister Thomas, we, we see that there's somebody else in the crowd that we need to know about. And verse 25 and verse 26, Sister Hamlet begins to lay it out for us. That there's a woman who's had an issue with blood for some 12 years. For some 12 years, she has been in pain. She has suffered. For some 12 years, she's had to live with this debilitating illness. It's interesting because as you look at it, this woman who, who we don't have a name for her, but we know about Jarius. This woman, because of her gender, is not looked at as an equal with other men. This woman, because of her illness, is ostracized by the community. Because of her condition, society doesn't view her on the same level as others. I'm painting a picture. This woman is in the crowd with the issue of blood. The Bible says that, that she has gone to doctor after doctor. Over her life, she has tried everything she could try. She's gone to every specialist. And the Bible says not only does she not get better, but every treatment, Sister Tanya has made her worse. So much so, Mother, that, that, that she has spent all of her money. She's broke. There's no money in the bank account. There's no money underneath the mattress. There's no change in between the pillows on the sofa. There's no room left on her credit card. She has given it all. And finds herself in a worse position. Some of us understand what it's like to give everything you've got. And don't find your situation to be better. Sometimes you might give all you have financially. But yet, you're still in debt. You might give all you have emotionally. But yet, the relationship still doesn't work. You might give all you have spiritually. And you may feel as if God just doesn't hear your prayer. Well, beloved, even in that moment, you might look around and you might see that there's so many people, so many things, so many problems, just like this woman, in between you and God. 
The crowd is in between you. Your issues are in between you. But, but, but I want you to know there's still some good news in the text. Slide on down to verse 27. And beloved, I want to declare, I want to speak into your life this morning. There are five words in that 27th verse that I believe are life-changing. Look at what it says. When she heard about Jesus. Those five words are life-changing words. Those five words are, are a turnaround moment. Those five words let you know that something happened right when she was probably ready to give up. She was ready to just throw up her hands. But when she heard about Jesus, she found the strength to go on. When you're praying for your children, praying for your grandchildren, and it seems like like nothing positive is happening. Remember, when you heard about Jesus, that somehow the name of Jesus is more than enough. And, and what the text doesn't tell us is what exactly she heard about Jesus. I don't know, Reverend Coleman. Maybe somebody said to her, Jesus is a way maker. Maybe somebody said, this is Mary's baby, the carpenter's son. Maybe somebody said that this is the one that when he speaks to the storm, the storm will cease. I don't know what, what, what they told the woman, but, but they told her something. Because the Bible says when she heard about Jesus, maybe they told her about how Jesus was able to cast out demons. Maybe, maybe, maybe they told her about how Jesus was able to hear somebody, heal somebody who was paralyzed. Maybe somebody told her about how Jesus was able to make the lame to walk, the blind to see, the deaf to hear. We don't know exactly what, what was said, but what we do know is that when she heard about Jesus, There's something about the name of Jesus. Something about the name of Jesus will give you the strength to go on. Because the Bible says that when she heard about Jesus, the Bible says that she came up behind him in the crowd. Just to touch his garment. Beloved, here's where the text gets a little tricky for me. It gets a little difficult for me. I already laid out, Sister Moore, that when Jesus got off the boat, there was a multitude of people around him. I already, I already shared that the crowd was a huge crowd. How does she get to Jesus? How does, she, how does she get close enough to actually touch the man when the crowd is so big, so vast, so huge? Some of you in your own life, you've had a chance to be somewhere and, and see somebody that we would call famous. You're just trying to get a glimpse. You cannot even get close. But somehow in the moment, here she is. The Bible says she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. I realize, I realize that, that I struggle with this. And the reason why I struggle with it, because I can't imagine that she's able to get from one part of the crowd to the other. I struggle with it. You know what it's like. You ever been online somewhere? And somebody who's behind you says, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. And everybody starts to look at them funny. But there's always somebody says, where are you going? The line. Is she the only one that needs a blessing? 
Is she the only one that's trying to get close to the man? But the Bible says this. The Bible says that she said, if I can just touch his clothes, I will be made well. And I realized, beloved, as I was praying about this, that every time I've read that sentence, I've looked at it as a statement. And the Holy Spirit said, look at it as a prayer. Imagine that she's talking to the God that she's trying to get to. If I could just touch your clothes, I shall be made well. Can you imagine how different our lives would be if we were praying? Praying as we were trying to get to Jesus. Praying as we were trying to touch his clothes. Praying not for just the right now, but for the what will be. She already knows that she's sick. She already knows that she's broke. She already knows that the doctors can't help her. But now she knows there's a man. If I can just touch his clothes, Bible says I shall be made well. Can you imagine, excuse me, pardon me, I know, I know, I know. But please, please, please. I'm just, I just, please. I know, I know you're waiting. I, I, please, please, God, please. Please let me just get there. Family, I learn each and every day of my life. There's victory in your destination. But there's a blessing in how you press to that destination. God will honor you if you continue to press and pray. God will honor you if you continue to believe and trust. God will part the waters for you. God will move the crowd because God hears you talking to him. Sister Morrison, God hears your prayers. It might take two years. It might take 12 years. But God hears your prayers. If I could just touch him, everything's going to be all right. If I could just pray till I touch him, everything will work out. If I could just, just sing till I touch him, everything's going to work. If I could just dance till I touch him. I know God will open up the windows in the midst of the crowd. God said, I've got room for one more. All of these people wanted God's attention. But this one woman, God made a way for her. The Bible says, and again, it gets complicated for me. The Bible says that she touches his garment. And when she touches his clothes, power goes out. And Jesus stops, even as people are bumping up against him. Jesus stops, and he says, who touched me? You got disciples around him saying, how can you ask that question? Do you see all these people? Everybody's touching you. But the Bible makes it clear that, that Jesus is raising the question, who touched me? And I realize that, that, that it made no sense to me. Because doesn't it seem strange to you as well? That a God who knows everything doesn't know who touched him? But I realized that the question about who touched me in the text isn't so that Jesus can get revelation. The question about who touched me in the text is so that we can get revelation. Jesus knows who touched him, but nobody else in the crowd knows that he's been touched this way. You see, let me, let me see if I can break it down like this. When you read the text, you think 
that the blessing is in the woman's hand touching his clothes. No, no, no. The blessing in the text is the woman's faith touching his heart. It's your faith that activates the move of God. It's your faith in the midst of obstacles that activates God's move in your life. It's your faith where God will say, you know what, because of your faith, I've got another blessing for you because of your faith. I'll open up another door for you because of your faith. God will say to you, I don't care how big the crowd is. I'm going to make room for one more. Because of your faith, God says, I'm going to give you a blessing. Because of your faith, God says, I'm going to move a mountain. Because of your faith, God is going to say, look, if you got enough faith to show up for the interview, I've got enough blessings to give you the job. God says, if you got enough faith to show up to fill out your application, God says, I'll give you the house. God says, if you got enough faith just to believe in me, God says, I will make a way out of no way. What kind of God is this that's always making room for one more? Are you the one more? Well, what, what, what have you been standing in need of? What kind of pain and suffering have you been living with? What kind of problems have you had to face? I want you to know that God says, I don't care how big the crowd is, if you got faith, God will make room. For one more. Are you the one more? You've been praying for your family. You didn't think. Well, but are you the one more? How's your faith? I need, I need to check the temperature of faith in the room. How's your faith? Faith was never meant to be convenient. It was meant to be consistent. No matter what you see, hold on to God's unchanging hand. God says, I've got more just for you. Just when you think the door is about to close, you ever been there? The door is about, oh, do you have room for one more? God is always making room. Made room for me. Makes room for you. Makes room for us. God is always making room. Say it with me. For one more. As we stand all over the sanctuary. I don't know what you've been struggling with. I know some, I look around and say, I know some, but we all are dealing with some kind of struggle. But I thank God for the moment you heard about Jesus. Because I can preach about what I heard about, but I can also preach about what I know about. I know for myself, Jesus is a healer. I know for myself that Jesus is a provider. I know for myself that Jesus is a protector. I know that for myself. When I had to go in for surgery, he healed me. He healed me. We look in our freezer right now. There's food there for us to cook. He provided. When a car ran through a red light and, and hit me and spun me all the way around where I was facing the wrong direction, and try, he's a protector. I walked away. I mean, I can preach about what I heard, but, but it's so much more fun for me to preach about what I know. The places I've been, the bullets that miss my body. The addictions that God broke in my life. I can preach about what I heard, but it's so much more fun to preach about what I know. When I was out of work, God provided. It's what I know. When I heard about Jesus. Today, you've heard about Jesus. I don't know what you're going through, but I do know who can bring you through. If you have not made the most important decision, and that is to choose Jesus to be Lord over your life. Better yet, if you have not made the decision 
to have faith to press your way to Jesus no matter what. Today's that day. Every one of us will go through something that's bigger than us. Every one of us will go through something that's bigger than us. Jesus will honor your faith. Can Jesus say to you, who touched me? Isn't that the question before us? Can you touch the heart of God today? Gracious God, wonderful Savior, thank you for making room for one more. Thank you, God, for making room for me. Thank you, God, for making room for my brother. Thank you, God, for making room for my sister, my mother, my neighbor, my friend, the stranger. God, you have always been willing to make room for one more. I ask you now, God, to do that today. Touch somebody's heart. Let them know that their prayers have not been in vain. Let them know, God, that if they can just touch your heart, that everything will change. God, we bless you. Jesus, we bless you. Holy Spirit, we bless you. Have mercy now and always. This we ask and pray in Jesus' name that the people of God say, Amen. Amen and amen again. You may be seated in God's presence. If you're somebody here today that doesn't have a place you can call your church family, whether you're in the sanctuary or whether you're watching virtually, you can be a part of this church family. This isn't about me getting you into Carter community, but this is about helping you touch God. If you can touch God, Look what Jesus said to the woman. Oh, you touched me? Oh, that's great. Listen, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. God desires to say that to each and every one of us. Your faith has gotten you out of that situation. Your faith has gotten you into that new promotion. Your faith has restored your family. Your faith has delivered your children. Your faith, your faith, your faith, your, your faith. has made all things well. Go in peace. If you are watching online, you can send an email to cartercommunityame at gmail.com. And you, you can just ask the question, is there room for one more? I'll respond to that question because I'll tell you about a man named Jesus. If you're here in the sanctuary after service today, I'll still be around for a little while. If that's you, you can just come up and speak to me. We're not moving around like we did. We can be socially distant. But you can just ask the question, is there room for one more? Yes. <laughs> Heaven's not full yet, y'all. There's still room for one more. And we trust and believe God for it. Beloved, let's prepare our hearts and our minds to share in the Holy Communion as our stewardess comes at this time. Was you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble. Sometimes it 
causes me to tremble, tremble, was you there when they crucified my Lord? Was you there when they hung him on the tree? Was you there when they hung him on the tree? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble. Tremble, was you there when they grew by my Lord? Amen. Beloved, would you join me in the general confession? Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy did give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee and grant that we receive in these thy creatures of bread and wine according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institute. In remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. On the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. For this is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you do this, you do so in remembrance of me. And likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, take, drink. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which has been shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. As often as you do this, you do so in remembrance of me. The blood 
Christ, broken for you and for many, so that you and I may have a right to the tree of life. Together, let us feast. Amen. precious blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. More perfect than the blood of Abel because it takes away the sins of the world. Together let us drink. And be grateful. Amen.
it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the saw a new heaven and a new earth and there was no more sea then I John saw the new city Jerusalem descending down from heaven as upon a cloud like a bride adorned for her husband and then I heard a voice from heaven declare the tabernacle of God it's with all people. God shall be their God, and they shall be God's people. And God will wipe away every tear from their eye. For there shall be no more death. There shall be no more pain. There shall be no more sorrow. There shall be no more of any of things. Why? Because the former things have all passed away. Beloved, will you join with me in the prayer that our Lord and our Savior taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, it is my prayer that God will bless you, not just today, but throughout the week and always. Um, I want to thank God my mother came in today. So I didn't know when she walked in whether or not I was in trouble or not. As you've heard me say, you heard me say, you know when somebody really loves you is when they're willing to pay the toll. 
right. Yeah, but she'll pay the toll because she loves me. And she'll pay the toll when I'm in trouble as well. <laughs> but just glad she came here to spend some time with us here in this worship experience. Always remember, no matter what it is you're going through, that God has room for your prayers. God will make room for one more, and that one more is you. Reverend Coleman, come on, bring us home, sir. What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, our sins and grief to bear. And what privilege is to carry everything to God in prayer. We often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, because we do not care. Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged to take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so May the God of peace go with you. Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah!